This is where NAT comes into play. NAT converts private addresses to public addresses. Let's take a closer look at how this works. We will simplify this to make it easier to understand. First, we'll look at PAT, which stands for Poor Address Translation, also known as Overload. This is by far the most popular version of NAT and is what you'll be using in your home. When your computer sends data to the router, the router takes a look at it. It looks at the source address, the port number, the destination address and the destination port number. Now the port number is very important here. Not only will it distinguish which device the data belongs to, but it also tells the device which application that data belongs to. Very simply, the router swaps out the private source address and port number, then swaps it for a public address and port number. The port number will often stay the same, but if it's already being used, then the next available one will be selected. To keep track of which public addresses belong to which private addresses, the router builds a NAT table. This table matches the private address and port number to the public address and port number. Once the router swaps the addresses and adds it to the table, it rebuilds the data and sends it on its way. When the data comes back, the router again looks at the addresses. The source address is now the address where it came from. Some web server somewhere doesn't really matter. The destination is now the public address and port number. The router looks at this and checks the destination against the NAT table. If it finds a match, the router will swap out the public address and port number for the private address and port number. It will then send it on its way. Once the computer has the data, the port number will tell which application to send it to. If you're searching the internet, for example, it can even tell which tab to send that data to.